How do you want to be remembered? That's the conversation we're going to have here today on Self Love Monday. How you guys doing? This is Ron Sip Five Myers, author, podcaster, and your uplifting life partner. Now, this is a conversation that everyone needs to have. And like yesterday, that you really need to figure this out. And the reason for it is because it will allow you to start living your life at the moment to build towards whatever it is you say you want to be remembered by. Um, but let's let's back up and cover some of some things before we get into all that. Because um, for some people, when they hear want to be remembered by, the first thing people figure out is, or at least they're told to figure out is, what is your purpose? Why are you here? I don't think it's a mystical question. I think it hurts people because a lot of people spend their life trying to find this mystical thing. And if they don't find it, there are people who are willing or have tried and some who have been successful at taking their lives because the fact is they all had all the exterior things, the things that people told you um, would make you feel important, uh, the things that are important. And again, it's external stuff. And they realize that wasn't it. Because see, the purpose, and I believe you came here is to experience being a human being. And that means the things that cross your path, you get to put your foot in the water and see if there are things that you want to pursue even more and, and find out more about it. Because um, I've always heard people say stuff like even athletes, they'll say a person was born to be a basketball player. And I'm going, really? Think about it. Usually by an NBA player, professional. Uh, most of them play maybe two to three years. Professional, majority of them. The exceptions to the rule. I remember hearing, uh, I had read somewhere where it was showing like there were four, I think there was four at the time, like four uh, NBA players that ever reached 20 years. Think about that. 20 years. Four players in history that played for 20 years? So if only 20 years of your life, or even if you say the 18 that they went through high school, so 38, let's say, say 38 years old. Really? So you've already pursued your purpose and you're finished at 38? That's why a lot of people that are in those positions get depressed. And because they believed, because of what the world taught them, that that was actually their purpose. No, it wasn't. It was something that crossed your path. It piqued your interest. You put your foot in the water. You enjoyed it and you ran with it. That's called being a human being and, and enjoying the human experience. And that's really what purpose is. It's the things that cross your path. Experience those things that... that, uh, that uh, pique your interest and those that don't you move on um, you guys heard me talk about the buffet um, I heard that from Marissa Peer where she talks about if when you go to a buffet you don't sit there and complain about the stuff no that was Esther Hicks let me give the credit the right way it was Esther Hicks um, she talked about the buffet where you go to a buffet you see the things you like you put on your plate you eat them and the stuff that you don't like, you just walk past. You don't sit there and go through changes. And if we learn to live our lives the same way, um, even with, as a GPS, if the GPS, if you go in the wrong direction, is funny, the GPS just recalculates. It doesn't go through changes. If we learn to live our lives that way, life would be incredible. But anyway, back to this purpose thing. Um, to me, just go through life, experience the things that cross, peek your, peek your head in, put your foot in, those things that, that kind of inspire you a little bit and see where it goes. But to me, that is the purpose. This is not a mystical thing. And it's not something that you have to spend all, um, all your life chasing to figure this out. Just be a human being. But then some people, when we even beyond purpose, they start talking about legacy. And the legacy is what you leave behind you. And I used to have people that would even tell me, they go, Ron, you don't have any kids. And what is your legacy going to be? And I even had guys when, when I told them um, that my wife couldn't have kids, they were like, man, you should get divorced. And that's grounds to get divorced. If your wife can't get your kids and all that, I'm just like, huh? Um, my vows are a lot bigger than kids. And not only that, legacy has to do with you, not those that come behind you, before you. Um, when you talk about the, the, the big names, the Gandhis, the, the, the Martin Luther Kings and all the other people, you don't sit there and talk about who were their grandparents, who were their kids, who were their legacy is what you believe behind. Um, and so it doesn't matter me having kids is what impact am I making? And folks, here's the key. Everyone, let me say it again. 
everyone leaves a legacy. Again, this is one of those things we try to make it sound mystical. It's not. Everyone leaves a legacy. The question is, what legacy did you leave? I've had people that when I was younger, they, were, they had alcohol issues. They taught me not to drink. That's at least what I took my perspective and why I don't drink because I watched the way they lived their life. That's a legacy that they left. Now, some people go, that's negative. I don't think it was negative. It was a positive for me because I'm able to take their experience and use it for me. Legacy. So, but for me, it's bigger than worried about this purpose thing and the legacy things. It's getting to when we're talking about how we, you want to be remembered. I think it's most important is regrets. Making sure that when you leave here, that you have no regrets. And you do that by looking at the things that are going on in your life and, and have the conversation. Sit back and go, if I were writing, and I heard somebody say that, if you were writing your last words to leave to the world, what would you actually say? If they were reading the last chapters of your book, what can you say about your life to where you have no regrets? Is it, and normally, and in, in most people's case, it's always gonna come down to relationships, in most cases. I mean, I say all, but in most cases, it's gonna come down to relationships. Mending that relationship with your sister, your brother, your cousin, your uncle, your parents, whatever, that's usually where most people's regrets come from. Folks, if you recognize that, get those resolved immediately. Why? None of us are guaranteed the next minute, next five minutes, next day, again, Let's make sure that we don't leave here with any regrets and we have to address those now. That old saying about uh, bring me my flowers while I'm alive, that's what we need to do. While we're alive, let's go get these things resolved and bring flowers and get, and get some healing going on if that's what we need to do. But whatever it is, let's have no regrets. So if we're talking about from a, uh, a business perspective, which is the exterior stuff, the way to me to, to address this, if we want to make sure we have no regrets, is to actually use the six human needs and try and plug that in. And we guys, you guys know the six human needs, um, which came from Tony Robbins. You have certainty, uncertainty, significance, love and connection, growth, and then you have contribution. Not in any specific order. It depends on the person. But... To me, if you even use that six human needs to help you address the issue, I'm not talking about the regrets with, with people. You need to figure that out and get those addressed. But this is more, again, towards figuring out that what do you want to be remembered for from a profession or from your uh, the way you lived. And we can use the six human needs by doing that. Because again, as we said before, legacy, you're going to leave one. And for me, it used to be, I wanted to make an impact where when people said King and uh, Gandhi and they said Ron Myers, it was in the same conversation. That's what I really felt I needed to do in order to make my life important. But uh, I've grown beyond that now. It's, it's, it's making the impact on those who surround you, understanding that in itself will evolve into uh, numbers of people that you can't even, uh, you personally would have no idea because you tell someone something, share insight, they go share it with someone and et cetera, et cetera. So you're making a legacy and an impact and you can't measure that. But for some of us, and I was guilty of it, I wanted on a mass scale where to where the world knew my name. And it's funny how I ended up doing the book um, and, and I never even looked at it from that perspective, but that's something that will leave, go beyond me. And the next book, that's something that will go beyond me. Um, but I didn't do it for the legacy reasons. I did it because I want to impact people. And if you, and so I guess what I'm getting to is I did do something without the intent of what we call legacy, but on the intent of really helping people. And I think that's kind of, we, when we use the six human needs that I'm giving to share here, you'll see kind of what I'm talking about, but figuring out that, that, that field or whatever it is. Using the six human needs, let's get certainty. What is it that we're really, pat let's sit down and have that conversation. What is it that we really truly have always wanted to do? If it was in the medical field or it was helping animals or whatever, being in acting, whatever it is, 
let's figure out how, I mean, exactly get some clarity. That's the certainty. Let's get some clarity on what it is that we want. Again, so we don't have any of the regrets that we're talking about. And then that would lead us to the uncertainty, which is as we figure that out, there are things we're going to realize that we don't know. Um, you don't even know in terms of if you wanted to get into uh, helping animals, all the different fields that are actually in, uh, I should say, opportunities. That would be better. Opportunities that play in that particular field. I remember having someone talking to me about they wanted They've always wanted to play sports and, and they were too small or whatever. And I'm like, but you can still get around sports. You could be a coach. You know what I mean? You could go and be an assistant somewhere, go work in a, in a gym or go work at a, uh, some, some, some school team or something and just be an assistant coach or move to a head coach or whatever. But I'm just saying, but there's so many different ways, so many different opportunities in every field. If you think beyond just the normal process, if you pulled it up and looked, um, on some like Google and Googled it and found out um, all the different opportunities tied to whatever you think, because we all don't know what we don't know. And by that, I'm saying there's so many things that are attached to the, the, um, just the vague understanding we have, like I'm talking about it. We used animals, for example, we just think it's just helping animals and that's just the thought process, but we don't know the different opportunities that exist and how that, how you could actually participate in that particular field without doing the research. That's going to be the uncertainty, but that becomes the exciting part, the research to find out what it is that um, is out there. So after we've gotten past the uncertainty, which was number two, we get to the uh, third one, which is significance. And the significance has to come from internal. As you guys know, I talk about that all the time. Um, and again, I was guilty of that, looking at significance on what the world perceived me as or what the world saw me as and feeling like that was significance. You know, that, like I said, that my name was up there with the Kings and, you know, and, and that kind of stuff, the Kings and the Gandhis. And, and that was my thought process of what significance actually is. But significance comes from inside. You have to know within yourself that you are doing something of value and that you're important and that you're worthy, you are enough. Um, and that's why I said those were my goals before and they're not there anymore because I realize more now that I appreciate me and understand that I don't need the name out there for the world to know, to understand that I am significant. But this is why I'm saying figure it out as we're doing the research. And this again, we're talking about the external stuff. We're not talking about the internal. Um, because that's why I'm at when I'm talking the significance. That's an internal issue, which is why the external I'm able to go do, but it's not as important to me anymore because the fact is I understand I'm significant whether I wrote a book or not, whether the world knows my name or not. I know I'm significant. Now, if I want to add significance to my uh, name, then I can go out and do the external stuff, which is what I'm doing here is adding that to it. But again, I don't need that to be significant. I just want to add significance along, the, along this journey we call life because I'm doing something I enjoy doing, which is what we talked about at the start. We said, let's get some clarity. Let's figure out what we don't know. Let's go do the research to, to get the information. And that's when I figured out I really want to go help people. You guys know I was in the financial service field for 30 years, but that wasn't doing it for me. And I realize more that I really, truly want to help people uh, love themselves. And, and then um, more importantly, knowing that if, that if that got resolved, then their relationships would work. And that's why that's where I'm going to spend the rest of my life. But that's me going to add significance to those that are around me, which means my world. And how big that goes, we'll just go for it and see where it ends up. But again, I don't need that anymore to feel significant because I love the person I see in the mirror. But anyway, so we got the third one. We got the significance going on uh, because we figured out what it is that we're going to do. We figured out um, because, again, we have to have this conversation. We have to take the time to do it. Folks, we're only talking about our lives here. <laughs> and let's do this so that we can enjoy the rest of this journey. And that's sit down and figure out what it is that you can get passionate about. What is it that you... Again, like we talked about, I don't care what field it is, even though the world told you you're too old, too small, too whatever, 
let's figure that out. Let's get some clarity. And then let's go with the uncertainty and go do the research and get into the, um, that's going to have you starting to feel significant from the external. Because again, Self Love Monday is about teaching you how to build significant anyway. But then that takes us to number four, which is love and connection. You'll start to feel that as you're out here doing it. Um, as you're starting to gather information and you're starting to share information, um, you will start to see the significance and that in itself will bring the love and connection that as a human being, we're all looking for. Even the people that claim they're not, trust me, we all are. And the ones that are, in den uh, that are denying it are the people that have been hurt and haven't been healed. Let me repeat that. They have been hurt and haven't been healed. And if you fit that description where your person said, no, nah, I really don't need that, take the time to recognize that you have been hurt and you haven't released that, you haven't been healed. Because as human beings, that's a part of being human. We all wanna be a part of something. And if you're a person that said, I really don't care, that is a person who has been hurt and has detached from what the human experience really is and folks, take the time and get the healing. Don't let the ego get in the way. Um, and then, of course, once we're doing that, we got the love and connection. We're going to move into the number five spot, which we know is growth. That's what all this is about. As we start contributing, we start doing, we're going to be growing in the process of who we are. Um, and, and feeling that our value is increasing. And then number six is going to automatically happen. That's what you're going to do. You're going to contribute to the world. You're going to do that, but and I just wanted to to, to to share how we can use the six human needs to actually figure out what it is, our reason um, for walking the rest of this journey that we have so that we have no regrets. And that's again, the external. The internal, watch a lot more of the things that I've shared, what others have shared in, in, in terms of self-love. Get that, as you know, for me, that's the first step. Love us some us, which is what the Self Love Monday is about. And then how do you figure out um, um, what you want to be remembered by, which was the purpose of this video. That's going to be the next step. After you get you together, then let's figure out how we're going to help others. Because the, the most important thing you can contribute to the world is you, as you guys know I talked about before. And that's a healthy you, a person that you love, that you see in the mirror. That's the most important journey. You get that resolved, everything else is good. This video is more about how to take the next step after we got us together. What do we want to be remembered for? And that's the external stuff. So as you guys know, it ain't right, it ain't wrong. It is my opinion. Uh, run on over to ronsimplifiedmyers.online. Again, ronsimplifiedmyers.online. Check out all the things that I got going on. Share feedback on other topics that you'd love for me to uh, share. And you guys know I would enjoy that. I, I love uh, having these conversations and doing anything I can to help people accomplish their dreams and goals. So as you know, if you're not having fun, you should be doing something else. Folks, just remember, most important, regrets. Let's get those resolved with family and friends. Then we can work on the external stuff, whatever it is. Like we said, using the six human needs to figure out that external. And we know once we get us together, those next steps become a lot simpler. I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care. Bye-bye.